Johnson & Johnson is dealing with some bad public relations this morning. The FDA says the Johnson & Johnson COVID-19 vaccine should be taken as a last resort due to updated analysis on a rare but severe blood clot. Earlier on CBS Mornings, the White House's COVID-19 response coordinator, Dr. Ashish Jha, weighed in on the latest developments. We do know of this very, very rare side effect uh, called TTS. And what this is, is a clot that some people develop. It, it, you know, it happens about three in a million, so very rare. Um, so what they're suggesting is that given that people have good alternatives, Moderna and Pfizer, two excellent vaccines that don't have this rare side effect, uh, that they're strongly recommending that people uh, get those instead of getting the J&J. For more on this, let's bring in CBS News medical contributor, Dr. David Agus. Uh, Dr. David Agus, good to see you, my friend. So uh, we've known about the J&J &J vaccine's risk of blood clotting for some time now. What is your uh, analysis on this new guidance? Well, you know, this vaccine has always been kind of the, the stepchild, if you will, to the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccine. The data show that the Pfizer Moderna vaccine had better protection. And we saw these rare blood clots, and they were, I emphasize, very rare. 60 total cases out of 17 million people administer them. But now I think the data are overwhelming that if we have a safer option, we should be pursuing that option if we can. It makes no sense to give something with increased risks, which is the J&J &J vaccine compared to the two others. So I, I think it makes sense. I think that this is probably a little bit late in coming. It should have come earlier. But certainly going forward with the Pfizer Moderna vaccines, remarkably safe and they work. So we are learning more about this new Omicron variant, right? And initially we thought, oh, you know, it's very contagious, but you're not going to get as sick. Now it seems like it's just as severe as previous variants. What more can you tell us? So it is just as severe as any other of the COVID-19s. The good in the United States is the majority of the country has some immunity, vaccines, boosters and prior infection. And that's what's protecting us. That's what's keeping us out of the hospital and keeping us from serious illness. So that's why we have to keep on with this booster campaign. So the United States is nearing uh, 1 million COVID-related deaths with cases rising in 47 states. Uh, I, I know you know this, doctor, but uh, hospitalizations are also on the rise nationwide. Uh, how close are we really? I mean, we've talked, people have talked about entering an endemic phase of this pandemic, but it doesn't sound like we're there yet. <laughs> Don't say that word, Vlad. Um, you know, yeah, we, we are over 100,000 cases yesterday in the United States. And so what an endemic is, is when things are very predictable. Right now, things are not predictable, right? New variants are coming, they're going up because they're more infectious, we're seeing increased number of cases. Luckily, the increased risk in hospitalization is rather minimal, and it's people who are under vaccinated or not vaccinated at all. So that part is predictable. We know who will get sick. But going forward, we have to get better at our testing and our, uh, once we test to use Paxlovid, which is a treatment that blocks serious illness when we need to to block hospitalization. Once we can get there and we know what's going to go on with the variants, we're going to be in an endemic phase, but we're not close yet. You know, Dr. Agus, it was interesting to hear President Biden at the White House Correspondents' Dinner uh, suggesting that part of the reason that we were all gathering was because we are entering into this phase where if you're vaccinated and you've been tested, people should be able to not carry on as normal, but for special occasions, for example, gather uh, under the proper precautions. Because it doesn't sound like states or local governments are ever going back to what uh, we saw back in March of 2020. Is that the message that the president of the United States should be sending? I, I actually think so. Um, you know, this is a time where we have learned through science and the benefits that we have with the pills and the vaccines and the treatments that we can live with the virus. What we're going to see is a new thing in the United States where various people are out of work for seven to 10 days when they test positive and then come back to work. And that's going to be OK because it's going to be a mild cold because if they keep up with their boosters and if the people who are higher risk get tested and take the treatments, we're not going to see serious hospitalization, and we will live with this virus. We have to. It's not going away. There are new variants coming. We already seen the rise of BA.4 and BA.5, two new variants in South Africa, which will probably be here sometime in the later summer. And again, we are going to live with it. We're not going to hide from the virus anymore because of science. Mm.
So speaking of special occasions, we have one coming up mm -hmm. uh, this Sunday, Mother's Day. I think if it's not the busiest restaurant day of the year, it's up there. So, you know, the indoor spaces are going to be packed. Any advice or precautions for people? Yeah, if you're getting together as a family and someone is high risk in your family, do the home testing. It works. Um, they're available now from online pharmacies. Use them so the people you're with, you at least know, aren't infectious at that moment. And then use caution. If there is somebody at high risk, maybe do that Mother's Day celebration at home or go to a restaurant that serves outside where much of the country is beautiful weather. And so really understand the risk you are willing to take and the people you are with are willing to take before you make your decisions. All right, Dr. Agus, thank you so much. Thank you.